go old school here. See if this way works. Are we up? There we go. All right. So a little bit about our process. Um, this is our, our complete process. You can see the circle area where we are in the, the beginning stages of uh, four different stages of public in, uh, engagement, the information gathering, which is our focus groups like tonight, having several of those this week, uh, then four of them in December. Uh, after we did a couple of, of kickoff meetings to really align this project um, and help align it around holidays and, and COVID protocol, those types of things, and try to get our dates uh, set up and in, in our visits and what have you. So uh, this was going to be an on-site meeting, but uh, we went to all uh, virtual based on your local uh, COVID protocol, which is fine. We can get the same information from the same folks. And then uh, also included in stage one is the inventory uh, assessment, which in March we'll have our GIS folks come down and visit every amenity, um, assess that uh, as to how it, uh, the condition and, and the amenities around it, and, and then be able to, to uh, do a level service analysis based on you know, what's the, the level service per each household and, and rooftop in your community. At the same time, we'll, we'll uh, work in the background and, and have um, a demographics package put together uh, with the level service as well as the demographics. Uh, we're going to do a couple of sub areas that make sense. Uh, one will be Los Alamos and the other one will be um, White Rock. And then we'll look at your um, county combined. And then we also are connected with a, a, a 501c3 research and development group through Greenplay that is called GP Red um, that has uh, um, folks from across the country, uh, edu educators, uh, park and rec uh, professionals, and basically doing research and keeping up with trends and testing policies, doing an awful lot of webinars and, and uh, gaining information on different aspects and the, some of those include exactly what we're doing here with the integrated is with community health social services those types of things so we'll be able to put uh, a lot of those trends together and then after we do get finished with the focus groups and we're going to come in for a um, virtually a, a county commission uh, work session and share what we've gathered the information we've gathered and get input from them. And then we will put a statistically valid survey together and send that out. And we will also have an online version um, that we'll be able to, to invite everybody to take and we'll tally them separately, but compare them. Once we get that information back and our level of service uh, analysis put together, we'll be able to come in and, and uh, share our findings, which would be you know the survey results, the public input, um, our operations analysis, uh, looking at the agency and, and uh, share those with the public, with uh, uh, boards, councils, and likewise have a visioning session that looks at preliminary um, recommendations and kind of come to a consensus on we're headed in the right direction so we can come back and start putting the draft master plan together, uh, which then we would come back and uh, present those recommendations as well as the costs and the timetable and uh, O&M costs as well as, as capital costs. And then we'll be looking for uh, final edits to, to put the final plan together uh, and come in and, and hopefully get that adopted. And then the last stage is, is the implementation stage, which is you know probably the most important part. Hey, Pat, can I ask a question? What's the time scale? over which all this is being done? Oh, I think, Corey, you might help me out. We pushed it a little bit based on holidays and, and 
the protocol and, and also pushed our, our inventory assessment just based on weather so we can hopefully get our guys down there where they can see the ground and what have you. Um, but I'm thinking if we if we are finished with all that, say April, May, you know, I think we're talking about maybe July, uh, we would uh, be able to be down there and, and have our draft plan looked at. And it could be June um, if everything lines up correctly. Okay, thanks. And then a lot of that just depends on, you know, some turnaround time. And one thing we do have is we have a whole lot of, of folks uh, reviewing this, uh, meaning we're we're connecting with uh, all of the adjacent committees that uh, that we're integrating in this plan. Um, so it's not just a park and recreation uh, master plan as we typically do. So, okay, I'm gonna let Corey talk a little bit about some of the, the projects already in progress and some of the things that uh, in his year being here that he's already heard are kind of on the wish list. So I um, just wanted to let you know a few projects that are <clears throat> are key projects under progress. Um, we've had to go back to the drawing board on the BM, BMX track. Um, the RP came in way over budget. Uh, we're looking, we have installed new lights at Brewer Arena and put all the wiring underground. Uh, we are had first round of public feedback on the Pueblo Canyon conceptual trail. Uh, we've been working on the golf course improvements to renovate the tees, greens, and bunkers for holes four through 18. I'm working jointly with uh, Los Alamos Public Schools on locating a, a tennis court tournament site, which is six to eight courts, and gymnasium, uh, potentially at Los Alamos uh, Middle School. Uh, these will be talked about further on in um, the end of February in a joint meeting between the school district and county council. Uh, some things that we've heard about and found on list that we would, um, again, just want to get some community feedback on, if you can go to the next slide, Pat, is um, we want to make sure that we incorporate our community health and library into all aspects of our um, programming and opportunities. And we've heard some conversations about an ice rink cover. Um, We've also heard and, and seen some from other people uh, upgrades to the campground at Camp Main, potential artificial turf on athletic fields, uh, pickleball courts, maybe a splash pad up on the town site, uh, all abilities playground, exercise stations along the trails. Uh, we're working with NNSA and DOE on conveyance of Rendaha Canyon. There's about 880 acres there. Uh, making that a recreation area. Uh, we want to be mindful of everything we do to ensure sustainable actions. Uh, North Mesa has some opportunities we need to look at um, between the soccer field and down to the tennis courts and master plan that out. We've got some parcels in White Rock that need to be looked at. Uh, cricket pitch, community gardens, lighted playgrounds, and then our tween center is still something on our radar. Um, none of these are in action phase now on this list. They're all, well, I take that back. The first two on incorporating a community health and library, we've been trying to do that over the past year, um, but nothing else is more than an idea on paper at this point. And we hope you can uh, build on that or give us your thoughts on some of these items. Great. Thanks, Corey. Okay, as we look at the uh, community services department, we typically look at five elements for a healthy system analysis. And again, looking at a little bit beyond the, the current system to see what fits. But without reading all this to you, you know, we look at, at why things are done, who it impacts, or what are the, the negative things that we need to maybe protect against or, or correct. From a community systems, who are those stakeholders and, and folks that can intersect with what we're looking at? And, and help us uh, complete this, this uh, plan and implement it. And again, look at all the, the assets and the, and the, uh, the uh, lands that, that and, and amenities that are there and come up with our level of service so we can see where services might be needed and what types. 
uh, looking at any types of policies or, or ordinances that would inhibit us to, to implement this plan. And then also looking at the resources and, and funding as to uh, how far down this wish list we're going to be able to go and, and make it still implementable. So tonight we're kind of looking at, you know, what are we doing? Is it working? And if not, how can we improve it? So we've got a list of questions here that we're, we'd like to run you through. And um, I think we can uh, just speak up as we go. Don't need to raise our hands. Um, we do have the chat feature if you would prefer to type stuff in or or uh, whatever, but uh, the, the questions on uh, that we want to start with are what are the strengths of the community services uh, department and, and what are maybe those challenges or areas for improvement that you would like to see? I guess uh, maybe there's only two of us that are um, kind of from the community. I don't know, Moira, yeah. uh, but I'm happy to jump in first. Yep, go ahead. Um, so I'm Greg Cunningham. I've lived here since 1992, raised three girls. Um, and I think there's a, a lot of strengths in the county. Um, I've golfed at the golf course. Um, I think we have a, a wonderful golf course. Um, I don't think this has to do with the county, but maybe it does, but the um, biking lanes that were put in a diamond after the fire, I think that may have come from the uh, post wildfire funding. I don't know where that funding actually came from, but the bike lanes now on Diamond Drive are absolutely wonderful commuting into work on bicycle. And the uh, bike line on uh, bike lane on Trinity, I've done that uh, recently. And that's also wonderful. It'd be even more wonderful if it could extend all the way down to the entry of town, but maybe there's constraints with businesses and so forth on that. But the stretch that uh, starts at Oppenheimer and goes down to the hospital is a wonderful new bike lane. The library, I think, is fantastic. I make a lot of use of the library. Um, I make a lot of use of it at the library itself, the physical books there and also online. And I think we have a really wonderful library. I think we have um, a lot of trails and um, I don't know to what extent the county's involved in maintaining the trails, but I've been on a lot of the trails, hiking, mountain biking and so forth. And I think we just have a, a great trail system. Um, the pool, we haven't used as much. We have um, kind of community, uh, small community run pools. Uh, I used to be the president of the Baraka Mesa pool uh, up on Baraka Mesa. And those are essentially owned by the um, by uh, the residents. So there's, you know, for Baraka, there was about 300 members that you know, built the pool back in the 1960s and then uh, pay annual assessments to keep those up. And so those pools are a strength that those are kind of privately run. I see the um, uh, slide uh, uh, that they're extending the, um, the blue whale and putting in some new family um, friendly stuff there at the blue whale. I think that's great. My kids are all out of college now, so not going to be using that probably, but that's great for the community. Um, ice rink is fantastic and I haven't been there since all the new upgrades but used to take the kids there many years ago and I always thought that was a wonderful thing that the county uh, provided. Um, I'm, I'm an avid uh, tennis player and so I've been playing tennis here for 20 years or so and um, it's I think a pretty big weakness that we don't have enough courts in one place. I think we have more than enough courts if you add them all up across the county, but we don't have enough in one place. And so the high school really needs eight courts. In fact, there's a requirement that any school that wants to host their district tournament have eight courts in one place. And that's a relatively recent requirement. Um, 
I guess the high school used to host the district tournament here, but we had to cart kids all over the place in order to get everybody uh, playing at the same time. But the state changed the, the rule, and so we can't even host um, the district tournament here in town anymore. We have to go down to Santa Fe, so we have a facility that's big enough to host, uh, to have all those um, matches going on. So I think they have the district tournament at uh, Capitol when it's Los Alamos' turn to host. So I would say that's a pretty big weakness. Um, another weakness is the uh, lighting. We only have four lighted courts in town. And so frequently all the four lighted courts are in use. And so people will come and aren't able to play because there aren't enough lighted courts to play. Um, another uh, weakness on the tennis side is that the um, courts, there's no kind of barriers between courts. Um, all the facilities that we play at, including public facilities in Albuquerque, um, have kind of separations between courts, right? So that balls aren't rolling from court to court and so forth. So I think um, there's a lot of improvements that could be made on the on the tennis front. Uh, yeah, I think that another thing is the. Um, the wind screens so it's very windy in the spring um, we have a tennis club uh, that often puts those up I think maybe the county has has helped with that or done that maybe more recently I'm not sure um, but that's a really nice thing to have in the spring when it's quite windy here and then um, kind of a, kind of a club space um, a lot of the places that we play including public courts in Albuquerque have um, you know facilities um, to change and go to the bathroom that kind of stuff which we have bathrooms at urban um, but not at the mesa courts and so any place if we were going to put eight courts in one place uh, need to have kind of a supporting facility there with bathrooms and places to change and that kind of stuff okay Hey, so um, I'll try and give you my input uh, quickly. I think I just moved here a year ago during the pandemic, so I'm uh, still getting to know Los Alamos, but um, happy to provide what thoughts I have so far. I think I'm still also learning what Los Alamos County Community Services does, so apologies in advance if I um, mention things that are not under the, the purview of community services. Um, so I would say at the moment, some of the, the great strengths I've been enjoying are the trails. I'm a big trail runner. Being able to get out and have this amazing network is fantastic. Um, I would say that there are a number of trails that could use some work. So one of my big frustrations is dead end, there are a few dead end trails that could make nice loops and, you know, trails that are up a canyon that got washed out and never got rebuilt and um you know that's a lot of work so I get it but you know if you're looking for things that could be done that that's something I would put on the list um the other thing when I first moved here was there's no comprehensive trail map that I was able to find and it would be really nice to have a map that actually includes all of the trails to help people start to learn them without getting lost um so those are the main things that I think about. Um, the other one that may well not be under your control is um, it would be amazing to have, if possible, a municipal composting service. So I know this is something that some towns have been able to do. I know we have a bear problem here, which is part of what makes um, residential composting in your own backyard challenging but in some places a solution can be to concentrate everyone's compost and have it all managed together. And that can be a, um, something that's more manageable with wildlife sometimes than each person individually in their backyard. Again, maybe not, maybe a different department, I don't know, but that was a thing that stood out to me. Um, I guess, and then one last thing was if I'm thinking about services that would be 
amazing to have. I think it's great that we have a, a bus system in town. I haven't found the hours terribly helpful. You know, it's a little hit or miss whether it's actually useful. And um, if there were a bus that went up down to Santa Fe, that would also be, I think, an incredible resource for the community. But again, I don't have a great sense of how much use it would get from other people. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next couple of questions. Okay, also. Are there any portions of Los Alamos County that are underserved by the community services? And who are potential key partners and stakeholders in the community in regards to assisting and in integrate and in implementing this integrated master plan? So maybe um, since we're not providing any input on this, maybe you could provide sort of an example from another place that you've worked with where you saw that and give us an example of where you saw a problem that might trigger something from us. Well, as far as underserved, you know, typically we can, uh, if it's an issue, people would know about it, but we hear both demographic and, and um, otherwise so you know demographic in in uh, los alamos county could be you know white rock is underserved um could be from a, another perspective uh, and we have heard it some of the uh, lower income and folks that uh, are, are stuck in their homes are an underserved population so could be any any population ring in, in that uh, you feel are underserved. Um, some places we hear seniors are, some places it's teenagers, some it's a certain part of the community that don't have enough uh, parks to walk to or trails to get on. And then the key partner stakeholders is, is anybody that, that you feel would be able to uh, assist in this integrated plan, meaning it's gonna involve uh, more than just Parks and Recreation as we do social services and, and uh, the healthy community uh, looking for, you know, equitable uh, partners to, to help spread this plan out and spread the resources out. So I don't know if that answers your question or not. But. Yeah, that's helpful. I mean, my, so my perception having lived here for a while is that the, and, and just about to become a senior myself, um, is that it seems to me, it feels to me like the seniors are pretty well served in this community, that they are they seem to me to be fairly well organized and, and fairly vocal and um, seem to me to get adequate services. Um, I mean, my um, perception is that in the past uh, teens have been underserved. Um, I remember when the skate park went in, there was a lot of um, opposition to putting it at the library. People were concerned um, that it was going to, you know, attract, um, I don't know, crime or something. I'm not sure what people were concerned about, but um, they put the skateboard park in there. And as far as I can tell, it's been a very positive thing for teens and I think other kinds of facilities facilities like that um, would be good. That seems to me to be maybe an underserved population. An overserved population from my perspective is the golfing community. Um, I've been a golfer in the past. I don't golf too much now, but it seems to me my perception over the years is that we put a lot of money into the golf course. And if you're trying to prioritize, um, I would vote for deprioritizing some of the golf course stuff and 
um, making improvements to other things like tennis facilities or stuff for the teens or the trails or a number of other things that may be less expensive than the kinds of things we do for the golf course community. Okay. All right, I want to go back one slide that, that we, I think we covered this one, didn't we? I think we're up to date. So the last slide uh, with questions, what are the key issues and values that Los Alamos County Community Services need to consider and that we need to consider to put this plan together? And then what are the priorities of the, uh, the plan? So if you can't have everything, what would you like? And I bet tennis comes up. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the uh, questions I have, maybe I should turn on my uh, video since you guys have your video on. So one of the uh, questions I have is, is how do you kind of assess, you know, impact, like how many users there are going to be for various things? Um, like, you know, I would imagine that there are a very large number of people who use the trails, for example. And, um, and so how do you, how do you, how do you figure out how many people are actually using trails versus tennis courts versus golf course versus. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, just being in this business, we, we know that trails of all the plans I've done in, all my years, you know, trails comes out as a number one priority, mostly because it's so universal. It, it's usable, you know, whether you walk, whether you bike, whether you run, uh, if it's paved, you know, you can take your strollers um, and it's family oriented. Um, but one of the best ways is the survey with, with being randomly distributed based on interest is, you know, for example, um, your interest in tennis. So your tennis folks, you know, two ways, your tennis folks that get the survey that might rank it higher. We do know that, you know, based on trail users in most communities that uh, tennis, golf, swimmers um, don't compare to that. You know, nationally, there's about a 30% rate of anybody, any population that participates in sports, yet we have a, a big focus on sports. So the survey will, will rank the, um, at least what they'd like to see happen to improve their type of facilities. And hopefully they think with their community hat on as well. So they think, oh, you know, besides tennis courts, so I'd still like this as well. Um, so it would rank more so where do, we, where do we need to improve and how do we need to improve uh, versus a formula that we can figure out exactly how many uh, people are gonna gonna participate, and you know, we there's no way we can match that, um, but we can come up with percentages of people that are interested in these activities and these facilities. So that's that's the statistical way to do that, and then we also uh, open up the the uh, online survey to have everybody participate. And, and, you know, we want the more the merrier. And um, that's one that, that you know, we, we would hope and want for the tennis club to email each other and say, hey, get online and take this survey. We also want the golfers to do that. We want the trail users to do that. And, the, you know, the more we get and we tally them separately because one is statistically valid and one is not. Um, and we, we are able to, to track IP addresses to make sure we don't have the same people stuff, in the <laughs> box. but it's okay if their whole group does kind of thing. So uh, that gives us a different perspective. And, you know, again, if we're talking, you know, now how do, how do we know how that percentage of the overall community commutes to numbers, that second survey will help us do that. But it's not, 
it's not a science, it's not a, an absolute number. Um, so, you know, we tend to look uh, in, in it more of a needs and realizing that there are so many user groups that are a small portion of your overall county population. And there's some people that no matter what are never gonna go to any of these facilities. Uh, that's just a given. And there's people sitting on their couches that pay taxes that go, you know, but they're wasting their money on all this stuff. But we, we know all that, we get all that. So we do the best we can to, to um, make recommendations for the better part of the community uh, to create that well-rounded quality of life um, and, and you know, looking at some of these numbers, but also looking at what you already have in those areas. Um, there might be, you know, hockey players that think you need another sheet of ice. And we need to look at, is that feasible based on number of hockey teams, number, you know, and, and how the public wants to support that or not. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it does. I had a couple of other thoughts as you were uh, talking there. So one is um, I used to run the girls uh, basketball league, which used to be kind of a private organization that arranged with the schools to get time for the girls to have in the gyms. And it got so difficult to find the time um, for practice and games and so forth that we actually turned the league over to the county. And I've lost track of um, what happened with that. And I don't know if that still exists and if it um, has the same problem um, that we had, you know, 10 years ago with just not enough facility space to accommodate um, all the needs on those facility spaces. And most of those facility spaces were public school spaces. Right. Um, and I know that they share with the schools. But again, what would come out of this, this process is the need for gymnasium space right. uh, by those that, that can't get in, that uh, are looking for places that can't practice, that no games and all. So I don't have the answer to whether or not the league you, you used to operate is still in existence and have the same issue. Um, but on the, the two things on the, on the previous slides that, that Corey showed as, as things that are already on the board is a tennis facility and, uh, and gymnasium space. So those two are kind of in the works right now. Um, and when so, is that? You said there was a meeting that was going to be held that was some, a joint county public schools meeting yes. to discuss and, those. And when is that? And um, I don't know. Corey would have to answer that. It'll it'll be at the end of February. The date hasn't been totally set yet. Okay. So, and so I, there I is apologize. I've got to I've got to run to a, a county council meeting. But if um, you have anything else that comes to mind after after this meeting you want to share please don't hesitate to send me an email or linda and we'll get it forwarded to the rest of the team great all right thanks corey mm -hmm. so, okay, another, so i, I kind of went back to this one because it did have the the tournament uh, tennis court tournament site on and the gymnasium space so um Again, we're, we're looking at things that are in the works, but also now, you know, trying to add to those things. Yeah, so public schools are obviously a key stakeholder. Yes. As you probably know. So another um, area that uh, you didn't mention at all that I'm also somewhat involved in is cross-country skiing. And there's a, a private group called the so Southwest Nordic Ski Club that maintains the cross country ski trails up by the uh, ski area. And they do an amazing job. As, as far as I know, they're completely kind of a private entity. Although one of the guys who kind of runs the whole thing, I think works for the county. So I don't know if they have any tie to the county or not, or if they need assistance, but I think they do an incredible job uh, maintaining the trails up there. And so, if nobody from that community is involved in this process, it would be good to get their input. Yeah. All right. We'll put them on the list. Anything else? All right. Well, as 
as Corey said, if you think of something, uh, shoot him an email. He'll make sure we get it. Uh, if you got any further questions, um, as far as next steps, talked about the uh, Thursday night webinar at uh, six thirty. Um, we will give uh, Corey and Linda a a link to publicize and basically hop on that link and uh, register. And then the webinar will be a little differently because we're going to put a summary of what we heard uh, so far uh, after our last focus group together and present that um, and still look for input for folks. So we're hoping a whole bunch of new folks jump on there. Uh, you're welcome to also um, attend and, and see kind of the, the summary of what we heard. Um, so let everybody know about that. And then I mentioned the, the County Commission work session on February 22nd. The inventory assessment, our guys will be down there first part of March. Um, the statistically valid survey and the online surveys, we hope by the end of March to get those uh, out in the public. And then we're shooting for the, the finding meetings that we mentioned, the, the two of those in April. And then come back in, in probably March and June to put our draft report together and then back down there. So with that, got any questions? Any further comments that you'd like us to record or get on paper? If not, we thank you for your time and, and stay tuned and um, stay with us for the entire project. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.